Hi friends! I really hope that you and your little enjoyed our video on chemical reactions and watching us make a huge mess. In this video, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can replicate these experiments in your own home, hopefully without the mess. Let's get started. that we do in the video is blowing up a balloon with baking soda and citric acid. If you don't have citric acid at home, there's a link in the description below on where you can get some. The fun thing about citric acid is that it is edible and it is really, really sour. So if your children want to try some, I highly recommend just a little bit because it doesn't take much. So your ratio between baking soda and citric acid is gonna be one teaspoon for one teaspoon. In the video, we're trying to blow up a massive 16 inch latex balloon. So we use 10 teaspoons of each. You won't need that much if your balloon is smaller. So the ratio that you wanna go with depends on how much air you want in your balloon. So this is a 12 inch latex balloon and I've added four teaspoons of baking soda to it. Then you'll want to add your citric acid to a bottle with some warm water. You want enough water that the citric acid dissolves, but not too much water. Um, if you use warm water, it will help it dissolve a little bit faster. It's that easy. And then you just simply stretch the balloon and put it over the top of the bottle and let it go. Here we go. So the baking soda does tend to get stuck in the balloon and that's why we tip it upside down in the video, just so that we can get all of it. If you're gonna do this with your kiddos, I recommend tipping it um, because you don't want the balloon to come off of the bottle. <laughs> and there you go. The second experiment that we do in the video is called exploding planets and it got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> For this experiment, you're going to need one cup of baking soda, one tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of baby shampoo, and some food coloring. So if you watch the end of the video, there's a clip in there where Hazel and I are in the kitchen trying to make the planets for the video. And I had laid everything out on the counter first. It didn't work out so well. Um, so I recommend putting everything in a bowl and using a fork. It helps contain the baking soda and gets the liquid evenly distributed. And then you can put it on the counter and your kiddos can help you form it with their hands. Once you make the planets, you can either use them right away or you can keep them in some saran wrap for a later use. So we still have a leftover, very small earth that we'll use today. I also recommend um, using a small tub to put underneath your jar. I did it in the video because I wasn't sure what would happen when I put Jupiter into the jar. I had never used something that big before. Um, I'm really glad that I had the bucket, but all of them overflowed. So there you go. The amount of vinegar that you use will um, determine how much foam you're going to get when it comes to dropping your planets inside. So in the video, we used half a jar of vinegar for each of the planets and <laughs> you saw the result. Um, so here I have about a cup of vinegar in the jar and our little planet Earth is about half of what you would get out of a cup of baking soda mixture. Then you just have your kiddo drop it in. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm glad I put the bucket back, back under. <laughs> All right, well, this one is just gonna be a little bit messy. 
The third experiment in the video is called elephant toothpaste, and there's really no way to make this experiment not messy, but you can make it messier. In the video, we use standard hydrogen peroxide that you can get at your local pharmacy. If you want it to be bigger and more messy, you can use a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide that you can find at a beauty shop. We use the standard hydrogen peroxide because Hazel is only two and she doesn't always listen so well when I ask her to stay away from something or to run away. <laughs> Imagine that. So if you have older kiddos who actually listen when you ask them to step away, then you can use a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide and I would recommend doing the experiment outside. But if you want to do it with your littles inside your kitchen, you're going to need half a cup of hydrogen peroxide into your tall cylinder, a squirt of regular dish soap, and some food coloring of your choice. The more food coloring you put in, the darker it's gonna be. In the video, we use 15 drops of purple and uh, the foam doesn't come out very dark purple. It's almost a lavender. So the more food coloring, the better. So you're gonna swish that together. And then you're gonna use a quarter cup of warm water, um, not too hot, you don't wanna kill the yeast, with one pack of baker's yeast. And stir that together. Once that's all mixed up, all you have to do is pour it in and stand back. <laughs> so the difference between this experiment and the exploding planets is that the foam that comes out of this one is a lot thicker and more dense. Again, you can make it a lot messier with a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide. So that's really up to you and how willing you are to make a giant mess. Well, that's the end of this video. If you found it helpful, click the big red subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you perform these, these experiments with your kiddos, I would love to know how they go. You can tag us on Instagram at Hazel's Mom Official. And leave me a comment below if you have different ideas on how we can better perform these experiments or if you know of an, ex of an experiment that you would like us to perform on Hazel's mom. <laughs> Until next time, friends. Bye.